There are two ways to administer remodulin, intravenously and subcutaneously. Intravenous infusion uses a surgically placed catheter and pump to continuously administer remodulin directly into a vein in the upper chest to keep the right amount of medication flowing into your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With intravenous remodulin, there are several pump options. You and your doctor can decide which pump is best for your lifestyle. In this segment, we'll focus on administering intravenous remodulin via the CAD Legacy 1 pump. The process involves six steps. While the steps aren't particularly difficult, it's important to follow them in the order given. The steps are gathering the necessary supplies, mixing the medication, preparing the cassette, programming your pump, connecting to your IV access device, and starting the infusion. We'll cover each of these steps in turn. We'll also cover how to prepare your alternate pump for storage. Before you gather your supplies, it's important to wash your hands thoroughly using antibacterial soap and water. Once your hands are washed and dried with a paper towel, gather the following items. Your CAD Legacy 1 pump, 250 cc vials of your prescribed diluent, a vial of remodulin, two 60 milliliter syringes, one empty 100 milliliter cassette with a red cap, a 60 inch extension tubing with a filter and a 3 or 10 milliliter syringe, or three vial adapters for drawing up your remodulin. And you'll need several alcohol swabs, a sharps container, a ceramic coffee mug, two AA batteries, which you'll need to change once a week, and a BDQ site valve or other split septum type valve, which you'll also need to change once a week. Once you have all your supplies, clean your work area thoroughly using isopropyl alcohol and a swab. Open the supplies and place them on the work surface you just cleaned. Discard all packaging and thoroughly wash your hands again. Next, take the vial of remodulin and remove the plastic cap. Do the same with the vials of sterile diluent. Open an alcohol swab and use it to clean the rubber stopper on each of the vials. Take one of the vial adapters and push its spike into the rubber stopper of the remodulin vial. Repeat the process with the other vial adapters and the vials of sterile diluent. Using an alcohol swab, clean the rubber stoppers on the vial adapters. You are now ready to begin mixing your medication. Mixing your remodulin correctly and accurately is extremely important to protect your health and safety. You should always begin the process by checking your dosing sheet and verifying the amounts of remodulin and sterile diluent you will be placing in the cassette. Once you've verified the correct amounts, take the 3 milliliter syringe and pull the plunger back to the mark corresponding to the amount of remodulin prescribed on your dosing sheet. Attach the syringe to the vial of remodulin and push the plunger completely so that all the air in the syringe enters the vial. Invert the vial and pull the plunger back, drawing in the dose prescribed on your dosing sheet. Tap the sides of the syringe to remove all air bubbles and check to make sure that the correct amount of remodulin is in the syringe. Remove the syringe. Take the cassette tubing and remove the blue cap. Twist the 3 milliliter syringe onto the cassette tubing. Push the plunger to release the remodulin into the cassette. Clamp the tubing, leaving the syringe attached to the cassette. Next, you'll need to determine how much diluent you need. Subtract the amount of remodulin that you just injected into the cassette from 50 milliliters. For example, if you used 2 milliliters of remodulin, the amount of diluent you will need is 48 milliliters. Once you know how much diluent you need, take one of the 60 milliliter syringes and draw up air into the syringe for the amount you calculated. 
Then twist the syringe onto the vial of diluent and push the plunger on the syringe to release the air into the vial. Pull the plunger back until the syringe is filled with the diluent just up to the mark of the dose you determined. Remove the syringe from the vial of diluent. Hold the syringe with the tip facing up. Next, take the cassette tubing and remove the 3 milliliter syringe from it. Discard the syringe in the sharps container. Now attach the 60 milliliter syringe to the cassette tubing and unclamp the tubing. Push the plunger on the syringe to release the diluent into the cassette. When you're finished, clamp the cassette tubing, leaving the syringe attached. You've already loaded the remodulin and the first vial of diluent into the cassette. Now you'll load the last vial of diluent. To begin, take the second 60 milliliter syringe and pull back the plunger to fill it with air to the 50 milliliter mark. Twist the syringe onto the vial of diluent and push the plunger on the syringe to release the air into the vial. Pull the plunger back until the syringe is filled with the diluent just up to the 50 milliliter mark. Remove the syringe from the vial of diluent. Hold the syringe with the tip facing up. Next, take the cassette tubing and remove the first 60 milliliter syringe from it. Discard the syringe in the sharps container. Now, attach the second 60 milliliter syringe to the cassette tubing. Place the cassette in a ceramic mug. Look to see that the bubble on the cassette is within the diamond and that the tubing ponytail is hanging down. Unclamp the tubing. Push the plunger on the syringe to release the diluent into the cassette, leaving a small bubble of air in the cassette. When you're finished, clamp the tubing, leaving the syringe attached. You're now ready to prepare the cassette for the infusion. Now that you've dispensed both the remodulin and the diluent into the cassette, you need to mix them. Simply rotate the cassette several times to mix the solution. Then rotate the cassette gently so that all visible air bubbles merge into a single bubble. Now hold up the cassette, with the syringe still attached, with one of the corners at the top. Keeping the cassette in this orientation, place it in the coffee mug with the small tubing hanging down and the air bubble you created at the top corner of the cassette. Unclamp the cassette tubing and let the syringe hang below the level of the cassette. The air in the cassette should expel and a small amount of fluid should fill the tubing. If it doesn't, gently pull the plunger until the tubing is full and you can see a small amount of fluid enter the syringe. Clamp the cassette tubing again. Finally, label the cassette with the current date and time. Now that your medication is mixed and ready, it's time to set up your CAD Legacy 1 pump. Begin by pressing the on-off button. The pump will be in stop mode. Before continuing, change your batteries if it's time for your weekly battery change. Once you have new batteries in your pump, check to see that the pump is still in stop mode. Then press the next button. The first option that appears on the screen will allow you to set your reservoir volume. To change the volume, use the up or down arrows. When you're done, then press the enter clear button. While your cassette reservoir holds 100 milliliters, we suggest that you set the reservoir volume at 96 milliliters. This way, the empty cassette alarm will sound when the cassette is not quite empty, giving you a bit of extra time to fill a new cassette. Once you've set the reservoir volume, press the Next button. The screen will display the dosing rate. Check your dosing sheet to determine your rate, then use the up or down arrows on the pump to set the correct rate. Press the Enter Clear button to save the new setting. If you forget to press Enter, the screen will display a message that tells you the setting has not been saved. Simply press Next to return to the Rate screen and program your rate, pressing Enter to save the setting. Then press Next. 
Clear the amount given every time you put on a new cassette by pressing the Enter Clear button. Press the Next button until the pump displays stopped. Once you have entered and saved your settings, use the coin to remove the protective end cap from the pump and attach your filled cassette to the pump. Leave the tubing clamped until the extension tubing is attached. Then unclamp. Remove the blue cap from the extension tubing. Then remove the 60 milliliter syringe. Discard the syringe in the sharps container. Twist the extension tubing onto the small tubing on the cassette. Remember, the end of the tubing with the round filter goes closest to your heart. Unclamp the tubing. Prime the tubing by pressing and holding the prime button on the cassette until three lines are displayed on the screen. Release the button, then press it again, holding tight. If the pump stops, release the button again. Then press and hold it. Keep releasing and pressing the button until the tubing is primed. The tubing is primed when you see a small drop of fluid come out of the end of the extension tubing. When the priming is finished, press the Stop Start button. If it's time for your weekly split septum valve change, add the split septum valve to the end of the tubing closest to the air filter before you prime. The prime is complete when you see a small drop of fluid come out of the end of the valve. First, clamp the central line. Disconnect the current pump by twisting off the extension tubing. Set it aside for storage later. Clean the end of the central line with alcohol. Remove the clear cap on the end of the extension tubing. Attach the extension tubing to the central line. Then, unclamp the central line. Now that your pump is connected to your central intravenous line, it's time to start the infusion of medication. To begin, press and hold the Start-Stop button on the pump until a series of lines appears. The pump will perform a short self-test, and then the word Run will appear. Press the Next button to double-check that your settings are correct. Once you've checked a setting, press Next to continue to the next setting. When you're through checking your settings, press the Next button to return to the Run screen. To store your pump, first stop it by pressing and holding the Start-Stop button until a series of lines appears. Next, turn the pump off by pressing the On-Off button until the lines appear again. Using the coin, Remove the cassette from the pump. Discard the cassette and the tubing. If it's your day to change the pump batteries, go ahead and change them. Once you've installed the new batteries, you can store the pump. Remember, as you begin treatment with remodulin, you should always follow the specific instructions and use the supplies prescribed by your healthcare provider. Please consult your healthcare provider if you have any questions as you start remodulin treatment.